God was speaking through the prophet Jeremiah, and he, he said this in Jeremiah 29, 13. He says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you'll find me. It means that as you pursue Jesus, as you go after him, as you follow him, you will have personal encounters with him that will change your life. Again, pursuing Jesus requires us to be intentional. So many amazing things are available through Jesus. But you need to be intentional about taking hold of them. When we step out, he meets us. So step out in faith. Apathy and complacency are not conducive to following Jesus. There's a lot of apathy in Christian life. There's a lot of complacency like, well, he knows where I'm at. I guess he's sovereign, which he is. But in this sovereignty, we just think, well, he'll, he'll, if he wants to do it, he'll do it. He wants us to take some responsibility in it, step out in faith. The first step in pursuing Jesus is to show up. I'm talking about showing up in the presence of Jesus, like pursuing that, like getting off your behind, getting off the couch and pursuing Jesus, like coming into his presence. One of the most important spiritual disciplines is just showing up. But we get so distracted. I don't think we're... Well, sometimes we're lazy. I'm lazy sometimes. But, but more than that, we're distracted. Number two, pursuing Jesus will result in a personal encounter with him. We see it every time in the Bible. When people step out like, I'm, I'm going to take a step towards Jesus. He's like, I'm right here. Sometimes pursuing Jesus is as simple as getting up and answering the door. He's like, I'm here. I'm not hiding from you. I'm not running, I'm not playing games, I'm right here. In fact, I'm knocking at the door. All you have to do is get up, come over, and open the door. It's not that hard. But it does, it does take some movement. I mean, actually the very word pursue indicates movement, right? Like, if you're gonna pursue Jesus, doesn't that kind of indicate some movement? Whether it's physical or spiritual or emotional or whatever. So Jesus has invited himself to your house. But you have to get up and open the door and let him in. And he wants to sit down with you. He wants to have that relationship with you. Pursuing Jesus will lead to a personal encounter. We talked about that. Number three, the intimate presence of Jesus will change your life in ways that adherence to a religious system never can. Do not mistake what I'm saying here. I am not saying you need to pursue religion. Jesus did not die for religion. Religion says do this, do this, do this, do this. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And if you get the do's mostly right, and don't do most, and if you get the do's mostly right, and don't do most of the don'ts, maybe you'll make it to heaven. The don'ts, maybe you'll make it to heaven. Maybe. But don't get too cocky. That's religion. That's not Christianity. Christianity is a relationship. It's like, do you trust Jesus? It's a yes or no question. Do you trust him? Do you believe what he says? It's a yes or no question, right? And, that's, and so we're, we're, we're pursuing Jesus, not religion. It's the intimate presence of Jesus that changes your life. Religion has no power to do it apart from Jesus. And that's a problem still today. A lot of people are pursuing religion and not pursuing Jesus. Here's the last point here. Pursue Jesus and expect to encounter him. It's not enough just to pursue Jesus. I mean, you need to do that, but you need to not only pursue him, but you need to expect an encounter. And I don't know how God wants to reveal himself to you through the person of Jesus, but I know he wants to. And it can be very personal in, in different ways for each one of you. You need to pursue, and then you need to expect an encounter. Because he'll show up big, and he will say things to you, and he will show things to you, and it will change your life.